Well, this is John Black, Super Chemist. Uh, we went over how to you get your spore, you scrape it into the petri dish, uh, let the, it grow, and the two spores will grow and multiply and touch each other and have sex, and they'll start creating mycelium. Then you take a little tiny, just a small piece for when you want to purify it. Take it to another empty petri dish and let it grow out. Why would you only want one strain? Well, you want them to grow at the same rate. You want them to fruit at the same time, the same, you know, rate of fruiting, and all come up and be, you know what I mean? You don't want uh, several strains, and then one comes up a week later, one comes up a week beforehand, they're all willy-nilly all over the place. Uh, you want it to basically come up and fruit, take your fruit, and then it'll fruit a second time. If you want, you can fruit it a third time, but you won't get as much. When you transferred your agar to the petri dishes, okay, that was a liquid and you were pouring it. When you do that, you do not Pac-Man, okay? And this is Pac-Man and where you just lift the lid up like that. You never do that when you're pouring the liquid because when you pour the liquid, you, you don't have enough space. You might as well go like that because it's just going to get in the way, okay? You always go like this. If you're doing plates, you would uh, pick it straight up, go a little bit over, and then pour. This way, you're not. This is, this does not is not good. But anyways, you'd have the plates stacked, so you pick the whole stack up and move it over. So you couldn't really pack man in that way anyway. You go back and get the next stack. If you went like that, the pack man, your whole stack would fall over. That's the only time that you should not pack man. Every other time, like we're transferring solids, or you're, uh, you know, you have a syringe, uh, you should always pack man when you transfer. Okay. Even even if you're transferring to a jar, you pack man the lid on the jar. Another thing is you have a knife that you use. You always sterilize it with a plane. And the way you cool it down is, like, uh, let's say I'm getting a sample out of here to put somewhere. I would poke the agar with my, you know, I'd heat it up with a flame till it was red hot. And I'd dip it into the agar where it was clean. And that would cool it down. And then I would make my cut. You should use an X-Acto knife or a scalpel. Uh, but you can really use any knife. As long as you can... Uh, you know, uh, sterilize it. So we grew out our my mycelium and we have a nice uh, plate there filled up like that. One plate will do a whole, will do like 15 jars, 15 quart jars, you know, if you had uh, a full plate of culture. Uh, you only want to do, take a sample about the size of your fingernail and put one sample into each jar. Now if you have less jars, Use more, you know, cut up more pieces and throw them into the, you know, if you have only seven jars, then cut up two pieces like that and throw them into each jar. It will only make it uh, grow faster if you put two, you know, two samples in instead of just one. It'll just grow twice as fast. I didn't do any math to figure that out, you know, 15, 15 of these squares, you know, 15 jars. If for all I know, it's 20 squares to do that. It's not like I did the math. I'm just guessing. Um, but technically, one full plate like that, you can literally spawn 100 different quart jars. But this, the piece sample that you'll be taking from the culture dish is so small, it'll take so long for your uh, grain to you know, get full of mycelium that it's not worth doing it that way. What do I do? I well, I'll probably have two plates that I put my spores on. I will take samples from each one of those and put them into individual plates. You know, once they have the mycelium, and that way I'll have two different strains. When that grows out, I'll have six plates left. I will take a sam six samples from each plate and inoculate those plates. 
three from the one strain and three from the other strain. I'd have three plates of each. That will give me a total of six plates that will be grown out like that. Okay. And then I would, <coughs> I'm going to take each one of those plates and put it into into six jars. Uh, they're half quart. They're one pint jars. These actually, I thought these were 350 milliliters. They're actually uh, pint jars or half quarts. Um, and I'm going to use these uh, plastic boxes like this that I showed you. A shoe box size. It says it's six quarts. That means I need one quart of spawn, okay, for each shoe box. I want three boxes, so that's three quarts. And my containers aren't quarts, they're only half quarts. So I times it by two, I would need six jars. I would need to inoculate six jars to do three bins, three tiny bins. All right. So and if I have six plates, that means I can put a whole plate into each one of these jars. Do you know how fast that will spawn my stuff? And you may say, well, that doesn't really help much because by transferring it, you're going to have to wait a week to grow this stuff before you, uh, an extra week before you can throw it into the into the grain. And so it defeats the whole purpose. And in a way, you're right. But that's not the reason why you do it. You don't do it to speed up the process. It actually ends up being the same amount of time either way. Okay? But my way, most of the life that the mycelium lives will be in the culture dishes an extra week. And that means that's one less week that it will be in the grain jars, okay? And when you're in the uh, petri dish phase, you, it's almost impossible to get any contamination. You know what I mean? Then when you go to the jars, you have some chance of contamination. I would need six jars. I would make enough for seven jars because I would think that one of them would be contaminated. And if it wasn't a well, I had some extra sp I had some extra spawn. Like I said, I always make maybe one out of eight assume is going to go bad. Okay, if you're you know, anal about it, and you really make a really good steel box, uh, then, you know, it'd be less. If you're not anal about it, and you're dirty, well, then it's going to be more. Okay, but anyways, so back to the video. So we're going to have our mycelium, no matter what we have, one plate, ten plates, whatever we're doing, we got, and we're getting ready to spawn. I showed how to sterilize and hyd hydrate the grains in the last video. Um, so they're already in a jar uh, with a lid on it and tin foil over it and sterilized and ready to go. All you have to do is put it in the steel box with your petri dishes, right? Cut out a sample, like I said, this size, about the size of your fingernail, uh, and or whatever size you got. It depends on how much culture you got compared to how much how many jars you want to spawn. But whatever it is, you just cut a piece, like I said. Heat up your knife till it's red hot. Dip it in the agar, clean agar so it's not hot. Cut out a chunk of your thing, uh, mycelium, and throw it into the jar. Put the lid back on it. Tighten the lid all the way down until you're completely done with this process. Until you're done with all your jars. And then when you're done with all your jars, you can, you know, wipe everything down again and you know, give it a quarter turn so it's not completely airtight, uh, so your, your mycelium can breathe. And basically, you just wait. You wait until the spawn has taken over the grain by 10 to 30 percent. When it does that, you close the lid up, shake it, you know, get it all mixed up, and then you open the lid an eighth or you know, quarter turn back. So it's loose, so that the mycelium can breathe, and you just let it sit there. That's it. So let it sit there until it's completely a brick. Uh, you can can barely see any spawn if you can at all. 
then you know you're ready to go on to the next step of fruiting. Now, you like I said, when you get done with this, you close your lids on your jars until you're completely done with all the jars. Then you move them into their own little steel air box, like this right here. And you'll have holes cut in it. You'll have a gasket for the lids. You'll have holes cut one on each side of the box. And you'll put micro pour tape over it so contamination can't get in, but air can get in and out. You would put your jars in there and, like I said, turn the lid a little bit so they can breathe. And close up your lid on the steel air box that has the gasket on it. Now it's a closed system. Here's how to build a steel air box. But go to Walmart and get a, 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 a plastic uh, clothespin uh, that you can put store and put clothes in and drill two holes in it um, that are big enough for your hands to stick through. Make sure there's a gasket on the lid that you buy. Then go to the store, get two pieces of wood that are about a half inch thick. Cut a hole in them the same size as this hole. And then buy a little piece of PVC pipe that's about three inches long. It has the same diameter as this hole. Then put this one, you're going to have two of these pieces of wood. Put one in the box, one outside of the box. Line up the holes and then drill four holes around the wood so that you can put nuts and bolts in there. Then slide your tube through all of that. And you'll have, since this is a half inch and you got two of them, that's a full inch <coughs> of wood so that your pipe doesn't go willy wobbly all over the place. Slide your pipe in and then cop, use silicone caulking over the bolts and nuts and where, you know, everything meets each other. Then you buy these long rubber gloves that go up to your, well, the fingers are kind of stuck in there, but they go through, all the way up to your elbows. And you stick the glove, just like I did with this, stick the glove into the pipe and wrap it around the pipe so, you, so that you can stick your hand into the into the pipe and you're actually putting your hand into the glove. And then you just tape up around here. Now you have a closed system. And what you could do is sterilize your grains, put them in this box. Clean everything down, sterilize it before and after you put it into the box, right? Then when your agar is ready, put your plates, your sterilized plates and your agar into the box. <coughs> sterilize everything in the box. Then never open the box again until after you spawn. You can pour your agar in the box and leave the plates in the box. The spawn, I mean the grain is already in the box. So you can and your plates. So you can grow out your mycelium and the plates, never opening the box. Then you can open the lids to the jars so that when you're ready to spawn and put your you know, cut your things, your mycelium from your plates, and you put it into the jars and you still it, I've never opened the box. Okay. And you can you know, every time you do something in the box, even though you're not opening it, you still have to sanitize everything down before and after. And I guarantee you that's going to cut uh, you know contamination down big time if you did it that way. Okay. Always store and then when you can even store it into there into that steel air box after you spawn it for about three days. Then you're going to have to move it to another steel box. Like this one that has the where you cut the holes and you put micropore tape over it. Otherwise, you'll suffocate them if you leave them in the original box, the steel air box, because it's a closed system. It, it'll just keep building up carbon dioxide. So once you do go to fruiting, you would have another, yet another third steel air box that had holes cut in it so you can put micropore tape on it. So contamination doesn't get in, but airflow does. And then you'd have enough room for three of these shoe boxes. And that way, if one of them gets contaminated, instead of doing the whole box, the big box, you just do the three small ones. One goes bad, you can throw it away. The other two can be saved.